Hello, everybody. On this week's show, Ben is reminded to fact check his articles. Free gets pumped over pumpkins, and I take a dip into seas of flame. All that, and you can win yourself a big box of adventure from Look Battlemats. To be in with a chance of winning, you need to comment below, be a subscriber to the channel, give us a thumbs up, and if you can, share it around to your friends on the internet. But right now, sit back and relax, because we're going to be going through the week's worth of gaming, and your weekend starts now. Hello everybody, we're back once again for another fun-filled episode of all the hobby news that you can take for this weekend. <laughs> and I'm joined by the delightful Ben and the lovely Free. The oh, lovely. No, oh, this new one. No, mm. yeah. Hi still, everybody. <laughs> still no Brothers Johnson, they're off doing other things, they're too important for us apparently. Can't Building happen. things both in the digital world and in the physical world. Mm. So. Really does sound like a, an origin story, that does. <laughs> that, that, that's how the evil Johnson brothers <laughs> conquer the world, yes. Yeah. <laughs> but we've had a busy week nevertheless, and we've been having a look over some of the new stuff from Infinity for mm. Operation Crimson Stone. Yeah, so this has been a series of videos from the folks at Covers Belly uh, over this week, which have been looking at their new Code 1 set. Um, so you'll know that they've done a couple of these in the past as mm -hmm. well. Uh, this one, Crimson Stone, sees Ariadna taking on Nomads. I'm personally a little, a little bit of an Ariadna fan. I do like myself a little bit of green, a mm -hmm. little bit of werewolves, sci-fi werewolves. What's not, what's not to love? <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, they've done some really, really awesome videos this week, looking at kind of like the concept design behind all the different factions and how they came to life, looking at the artwork through to miniatures design, which is very cool. They've looked at the background of each of these factions. So if you want to know a little bit about Ariadna and the Nomads, then you can go and do that and pick one of the two mm -hmm. to get a, a go with and then give the other one to your friend and sort of foist it off with them. Uh, and they're also going to be doing some stuff uh, with like demo games and all sorts of things as well this week, nice. which you will be able to see by the time this airs. Um, mm -hmm. There's also, oh my God, the miniatures in this set are fan dabby dozy. Uh, you'll see that in the pre-order uh, sort of image there as well at the bottom, they have some stunning miniatures that they've done for this. They're all metal uh, in 28 mil, as you will come to know and love with Infinity, mm -hmm. looking amazing. Uh, loads of new characters for you to play as for both the Ariadna and the Nomads. Okay, cool. You also get some exclusive stuff. Uh, so within the set, there's an exclusive miniature, which is cool. Mm -hmm. And then you also get this Dragon Lady event exclusive miniature which is included alongside those people that pre-ordered the big bundle. And then there's also this mission pack for dire foes uh, called Xanadu Rush. So for anyone who doesn't know, dire foes packs are little tiny kind of like narrative-based missions that you play that feature uh, like two key characters from the lore and the background of Infinity. In this case, obviously, it's Ariadna and Nomads, mm -hmm. and they're going to hunt down or capture or save or rescue uh, the individual that you see there in your games and then beyond that you can just use them as a uh, mm. important target in your games uh well your normal games of infinity as well which yep. is awesome so yeah it's very i sad, think it's but. it's a really really nice set um sure. i do actually have ariadna and nomads as well but i like the fact <laughs> that go. the dragon lady has been included because yes. i also have yu ching which is as we all know yeah. super fantastic great with her yeah. lovely little piglet blowing yeah. her oh, arm yeah. And, uh, yeah, she is exactly one of those high value targets that you can uh, use in your games if you want to actually, um, you know, swap out a token for a miniature. You can definitely do that. One thing to say about the actual Operation Crimson Stone box, mm -hmm. like but you can see the contents of it there. You don't just get the miniatures, you get a little game mat, the terrain, which looks really, really awesome. Yeah. Uh, the little rule book for getting you started with Infinity Code 1 and then also the tokens and all that kind of thing as well. Code 1, just as uh, those who are like, what the hell, you're talking about Infinity, but also Code 1. Code one's kind of like their simplified, but yeah, streamlined version of Infinity. Um, so for those people that have played Infinity, it is quite a big game to get into. Code 1 kind of like narrows the, the field a little bit more mm. to make it a little bit easier to dive in and play. Uh, yeah. But it's just as competitive, just as awesome, uh, and very much kind of like a, it sits alongside Infinity rather than being sort of like a lesser project or something like that. So yeah. Yeah. Very, very awesome. So yeah. if you if you haven't seen any of the videos, or if there's any ones you're wondering that you may have missed, if you go over to the Infinity Hub on the the, uh, the website, you'll be able to go in there and just 
click away to your heart's content. I, I, click. I will say, once you've watched the videos, or before you watch the videos, or at the same time as watching the videos, check out that little miniatures <laughs> gallery that we've put together uh, on the site, because that includes some ridiculously high-res photos of the miniatures mm. that you can be like, oh, I can almost touch it. It's real. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even have to buy the miniature. No. <laughs> yeah, that's eggs. very awesome stuff. That's how the magic happens. They tell <laughs> May have slightly broken the website when I put those on, but never mind. It's all good. Yeah. <laughs> they all knew the Everyone risks. Fixed. They yeah. all yeah. knew Stunning the risks. Yeah. And uh, I suppose one of the things, if, if people are interested, it adds two new factions to code one as well so yep. uh it increases it from the the four that they've had for the past uh year or so since yes. they launched code one to six mm -hmm. now so a bit more variety if you and your friends are planning on getting into it yeah mm -hmm. and that they're all compatible between infinity and mm -hmm. code one as well so the miniatures that you get uh, are not just you know solely available for code yep. one which yep. is good so there yeah. is quite a few code one miniatures as well that are playable in aristaya as well yes wow. very true you yeah. can see that. and there's a nice little switch between the two there so if you like mm -hmm. a bit of sports you can do that as well man yeah. corvus belly doing everything now i know we're gonna be tag oh, deathmatch <laughs> later in the year well not all tag raid tag oh, deathmatch was our game but yeah, yeah. uh tag, are, tag are raid we able to sue <laughs> <laughs> well carlos was there yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Some prior knowledge. <laughs> so, yeah, so definitely check out the updates for Infinity. Mm -hmm. But now it's the most important part of the show. Yeah. It's time for <gasps> Indie of the Week. Everyone loves your whispered version of that. Apparently so. I don't yeah. know why. It's, it's don't, very don't shout it. Just ASMR it into the mic. That's the first <laughs> You should, yeah. The Indie of the Week. Oh. Tingles. <laughs> Who have you found this week, Ben? Because my finger been, flutters now. Hello, I've, been, I've been pushed away from uh, picking the indie after not shutting up last week. <laughs> <laughs> well, this was actually suggested to me by a uh, community member uh, mm -hmm. who has been with us for a long time. Uh, and they suggested, hey, I know you guys have looked at all these different things. Have you looked at Spellcrow yet? And I was like, Heavens to Betsy, we haven't no. looked at Spellcrow. <laughs> um, so Spellcrow, weirdly enough, uh, was one of the first companies and the first news articles I ever wrote oh. in of War back in the day. Oh. And because I was new, I spelled their name wrong and called it Stormcrow because all I could think of was Lord of the Rings. Yeah, <laughs> Gandalf Stormcrow. Only, oh, well. only to have our editor go, yeah, you've spelled that wrong. Uh, okay, right, that, right. That's not a typo, though, is it? <laughs> it's no, not. That's just me Freudian slipping up <laughs> uh, on a massive scale. But, uh, yeah. um, but yes, Spellcrow. Awesome company that do fantastic resin miniatures. Mm -hmm. uh, been around since 2011, so very, mm -hmm. very old indeed. And they do this stunning range of miniatures for their game world called Umbra Turis. Um, so very fantasy archetypal in mm -hmm. many ways, but with a few tweaks and twists here and there. Um, their range uh, is, as I mentioned, 28 mil resin stuff. Mm -hmm. And they do a whole range of different things. So you've got things like orcs, dwarves, elves, minotaurs, werewolves, strange pumpkin creatures, uh, sort of like brought from sort of folklore and stuff, which is really nice. And it all comes together as part of their game. And you can see some of the packs for it here. Uh, just to give you kind of like an overview of Umbra Taurus itself. Uh, so it's a skirmish game. You make warbands of heroes and adventurers that you send off into a strange magical city called Umbra Turis to hunt for fame and fortune. Yes, there's gnomes. Gnomes. Yeah. <laughs> a whole host of gnomes, which is really cool. I got really excited when I saw pumpkin creatures and then saw perfect mushrooms on the same there's street. There's an entire so. range of those pumpkin creatures for you to check out, which we'll look at in a bit, but yeah. Um, so, yeah, so you, you head off into the city of Umbraturis, and as is typical with a lot of these kind of skirmish games, you will build up your party and evolve your characters and fight for glory and honour and seek out magical artefacts and all sorts of things throughout the magical streets. Um, one of the nice things about Umbraturis is that it's not... it's a You can start with one of the box sets that you see here, so mm -hmm. like one that's very right. themed around a particular faction, yep. but you don't have to do that. If you want to mix in goblins and elves and dwarves together, you can totally go that direction if you want That's to. That's cool. Uh, which I think is really, really awesome. Because mm. as you can see here, they've actually done some of these like themed sets. So these are actually based around sort of areas of the city of Umbraturis and the different factions that exist within it. And instead of just having, you know, all dwarves or something, it's actually a bunch of the people that would be part of the temple guards, or for example, which I think is really nice. Mm. Um, uh, the actual miniatures themselves, I, I, I really love. They are packed full of character. 
Um, I'm fairly sure... 95% of these are all from one person as well, which is pretty Amazing. cool. Uh, and uh, I, so actually might have the sculptor's name on a lot of these, actually, but we'll see about that in a second. But there is a massive range of different creatures in here. Uh, if you click out, so we'll, we'll just go and have a, let's do some of these. Um, so there you go. There's some of the pumpkin-y stuff. Pumpkin spider. <laughs> yeah, because why would it not? Is it one spider in a pumpkin? Is it a pumpkin yeah. spider? Is it a hundred hybrid spiders <laughs> carrying a pumpkin? We'll never know because I'm not opening that. <laughs> never open it, yeah. Never open uh, it. No. Yeah. The, must... this, is the, the, this particular miniature actually, I think, really shows off some of the mm. quality that um, uh, Spellcrow have when it comes to doing these miniatures. There's a really nice kind of like um, sort of whimsical fantasy to a degree mm -hmm. mixed with kind of like a comic book pulpy thing going on yeah. alongside traditional high fantasy archetypes um it very much reminds me kind of like of the style that you might have seen from like old confrontation miniatures uh but done in a in a in a there you go for example here are some werewolves that look very confrontation hmm. confrontation <laughs> confrontation <Hey>. uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah absolutely stunning miniatures with loads of character built into them yeah. and and a wide wide range of them as well i think their umbratura's range in particular spreads up like three pages I think. yeah there's quite a lot of them um i've had a look at some of these in the past i've done a few unboxings and john i think mm -hmm. painted up one of the gnomes uh, as a yeah. painting tutorial so yeah. that'll be lurking on the website as well mm -hmm. um but they they were absolutely gorgeous because you've mm -hmm. not just got the the standard um, dwarves and gnomes and elves and so on and so forth, but you've got things like uh, tiger people. I can't remember what they call their tiger people. Not rakshasas, not backwards-handed tiger people, <laughs> actual tiger people. Yeah. Um, more, more, Khaj more Khajiit, I guess, maybe. Yeah. Are we are we are we talking tiger people as in pumpkin spider or, or yeah, a, a whole that, new hybrid? A whole, <laughs> whole new hybrid. <laughs> whole new hybrid. Uh, which is excellent if you ever want to you know have Draken Corin's uh tiger guard from Midkemia on the tabletop, yeah. which I still think would make an amazing game. I'm mm. just saying, why has nobody done this? <laughs> One of the things that's quite nice about what they do as well is that it's it's slightly like weird hmm. um like for example I mean, you've got like the dwarf there with the fish helmet and the fish gun yes. oh like, yeah that's yeah. so cool <laughs> which i think is amazing uh or you have like the hobgoblins which have got the sort of all sorts of bits of well contraptions on their shoulders and all sorts of things hmm. as well so it's kind of like fantasy as you know it but with a little bit of a twist which i think yeah. is really nice um that's yeah. so cool yeah that is properly insane looking which is just what you want in your hobgoblins of course yeah. somebody's been on the shrooms mm. <laughs> yeah. I mean things like that the northern dwarf set it's particularly good especially if people are playing uh, sort of old hammer as well even mm. if they're not playing umber tourist per se there's an awful yeah. lot of character in these yeah. to make them ideal for, for I really I really games. like the um, cousin it looking dwarf in the corner Mm. It's quite <laughs> Wait, which one all of them have so much hair <laughs> all coming of all them. the way down <laughs> yeah. you'll notice like little tiny interesting things about each of the miniatures like for example in that set you've got the, <laughs> that northern dwarf but you'll notice that one of his arms isn't a normal arm it's mm. like a tentacle that is wrapped around the icon that he's got in his hand this one so here. Yeah, so clearly he's like a dwarf who has maybe found that oh. relic somewhere in the depths of Umbraturis mm. and it has warped and changed him slightly but it's not yeah. like traditional dwarves so they're not like ah kill him he's a mutant they're like no awesome power use it <laughs> so, <laughs> it's really cool. yeah and it is it's uh they've been going on now for 10 years mm. and they've just added more and more new and interesting things yeah. like the, the the gnomes are particularly nice they did a range of goblins i want to say about four or five months ago Mm. And the goblins are absolutely gorgeous. They're mm. just to die for, which is what I like to yeah. see. And it's one of those ranges that is kind of like evolving over time. Oh. So yeah, here you see, see the Dynak, which I think are mm. absolutely fantastic. I'd love to just use them just as a warband of their own, not anything different. But um, what's really nice about what they do is that they will often, because they have this huge library of figures, mm but they will also go back and redo stuff and update them. Yes. Um, so they've been doing that recently with, as you say, the goblins, and they did like a new orc warlord this week, which looks absolutely stunning. Yeah. Um, but these Danak are just, oh, God, I love them. God, I gotta love a pumpkin. pumpkin oh, yeah. It's, like, it's it's very unusual as well. Um, yeah. you, you know, I mean, scarecrows, yes, they're obviously something that yeah, most right. people will recognize, but you don't often, often see them. Oh, I've come yeah. back to the star again, haven't I? 
You've gone back to the start. <laughs> yeah. You just added more to the page. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's Go right. from I'll, bottom I'll, up. I'll though. go to the bottom there. <laughs> this is how that game is played. <laughs> that's huge, that minor. Wow. Yeah, so that motto was actually one of their figures that came out. I think it was the tail end of last year, maybe the beginning of this year. Looking really nice. Oh, I got some terrain as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the they beginning. have a, a lot of really nice terrain, including mm-hmm. not just the buildings and the wicked trees, but they've got like um, mm-hmm. pools of echo surrounded by nice. massive uh, tusks. I suppose you would call it. Could be some sort of fantasy sarlacc pet. Nobody. Can oh, the demon really of tell the woods is one of my favourites. I love demon the demon of the woods. <sighs> He's so good. He's so cool. Yeah. Because he's like, he's a demon, but he's also like a nature demon. So yeah. he's actually like, I'm not going to just corrupt all your souls. I'm protecting the forest. Thank you very much. How <laughs> dare you try and cut it. that down? Yeah. <laughs> so imagine having like a demon of the wood uh, with like a whole bunch of the Danak, the sort of like oh, uh, honking creatures so... around him. Just shooting dwarves in the head as they attempt yeah. to come and harvest yeah. all yeah, of them. Exactly. Yeah. The half giants are a range that I think it's one of their older ones, but they've got some of the new ones on their web store as well, which came out last year again. Yeah. So again, really updating the range and playing mm. around with it. But they keep a lot of the classic ones on there yeah, anyway I'm, because people people like them. Because so. he's he's lovely. There's no reason to get rid of him. Absolutely not. Yeah. He's beautiful. And I have to say, oh. if if people are gen- interested in the game as well. They can get that on the website for free in a variety of languages. Yes. I do. Yeah. I genuinely thought he was going like that then. I was like, that is a metal <laughs> little thing. No, he's, he's got spiky Wolverine claws on the back of his hand so he can ah, punch yeah. people. Good. Which is um, the way to do it. But yeah, as you were saying, Jerry, uh, the rules are available for entirely free over mm. on the website. Uh, they have the core rules to download. They've got the best area there. You've got all the things you need for running your campaigns, which is awesome. really nice. Uh, available in a selection of different languages because this has been going on for a while now, which is really cool. Yeah. Um, it's a really, really nice little team to dive into. It's about sort of like just under 100 pages, I think, for the main rulebook, uh, which is pretty awesome. Um, very simple and easy to follow, sort of like D6 style system. Um, I haven't dived into it too deeply, but mm-hmm. there's a bunch of stuff for you to, to dive in and have a look at. Um, Really, really nice artwork. A nice little dose of lore. Not too much to overwhelm yeah. you, but enough to get you started and thinking about the kind of war bands that you want to build, the gangs you want to build, which is really mm. nice. Um, it puts me in mind a little bit of kind of like the way that um, McCullough approaches like Frostgrave and that kind of thing. Sure. Where yeah. it's sort of like, here's a little bit of lore, but just have fun with it and dive yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. That's not to say that there isn't a lot more to on Returus in the world that they've built because there is another game that we'll look at in a second. Mm. Um, but uh, yeah, it's a, a very nice one for sort of like diving in and sort of testing the waters and, and being a bit creative. And, yeah, yeah, being creative and having a little bit of fun with it. Um, yeah. I'm glad to see that they have managed to get it translated into a variety of languages as well. Yeah. Obviously, some of the new ones like the Beastry is still only Polish and English because they're, they're a Polish company, um, but I imagine they'll follow suit soon after. Yeah. There's that delightful werewolf. Uh, this one's a, a much shorter thing. It mainly contains horrible things <laughs> like Minotaur and vampires yeah. and uh, nice. curse looking werewolves. Yeah. But again, it's it's just a nice nice little supplement that they are still expanding and adding new bits and pieces to the, mm-hmm. the, the rule set so you can change up what you're actually playing on the tabletop and make new scenarios as well. One of the neat little things I looked at in the kind of mechanics for this as I was sort of browsing through the rule book is that they have sort of like your traditional kind of like hit, wound, et cetera. Mm-hmm. But lo- you roll to see which location on the body you hit as well. So it's right. got like kind of like brings me back to sort of why I'm a fantasy role play, <laughs> which is quite yeah. cool. So you roll and then he's like, oh, I hit him in the head, but he's wearing a helmet. So, you know, the amount of wound you do to that person is reduced because of the armor on that, which I think is really nice. So nice. it encourages you to like actually play around with the kind of, the style of your miniatures, maybe mm. do a little bit of kit bashing, build them a little bit of armor if they didn't have one. That's world. cool. Oh, yeah. And also, I suppose that even though it is based as a, a miniature game, mm. it it could easily be converted into an RPG. Yeah, sure. Yeah. With your group, yeah. with very little work, because you have that sort of depth in there as well. If you want yeah. to go that way, have them hunting monsters and stuff throughout the streets of Amritsar instead of going up against each other and things. Yeah, really I'm, cool. I'm not going to be yeah. hunting that. that <laughs> or, whatever that's doing, it can continue doing. It. <laughs> or are the pumpkin people going to be hunting you? Exactly. That is much more yeah. likely. I feel yeah. much more likely. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so if you're interested in all the rules and stuff for Umber Tourist, you can go and get all of it right now and dive and have a look at it. Um, beyond Umber Tourist, which is kind of like their 28 
somewhat 32, depending mm. on kind of like scales and how you reference things. Uh, they also have a 10 mil game, mm-hmm. which is going to be coming out in October of this year. Right. So Argatoria is set in the wider world of um, uh, sort of like where Umbraturus is set. Yep. Mm-hmm. And instead of playing uh, as sort of like individual models, you're instead taking control of large sort of Warhammer, uh, Warmaster, sorry, uh, style armies on the tabletop. Nice. So it's not just individual figures and heroes, it's huge regiments of troops marching to battle. Oh. Um, and this kind of expands things out to include their larger world map that they've designed for this. Uh, mm. So I have no doubt they're going to be doing more stuff with that and looking at actual things like proper role play games and stuff in the future as well. But I think they've covered like, I think it's four factions so far. And they're yeah. going to be doing like, I think it's up to six, I think, when they get to the end of it, which is pretty awesome. Yeah. Um, and there's a whole range of different quirky looking um uh, 10 mil units for you to pick up sort of like reptilian armies and also things like that i really loved <laughs> I, I, I like the style of it which goes back to kind of like old hammery stuff hmm. like you will have noticed from the title for Arcatoria, it's kind of got that kind of like look at us we're hero quest style thing which yeah. i think is really nice mm-hmm. uh and they've really sort of embraced yeah. that when it comes to kind of like the art and the design of the miniatures and stuff yeah. for, uh, for the Arcatoria. So, yeah. yeah, I was interested when I seen them starting to work on this last year mm-hmm. because they started with the the lizard men, the Argatorians, yes. essentially. Yeah. Um, and you're going, well, that's an unusual direction to take. And then when you start to see how they've actually designed and, and built the world up, that it, the whole point of it is that the um, the various factions of lizard men are <laughs> kicking off, essentially. So it, it it is somewhat from their point of view. Um, yeah. Normally. <clears throat> the mythical creatures sort of get shunted to the side in games like these, mm. and you're looking at um, humans, 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 more humans, dwarves, and elves. Yeah, they've, they've very fir- firmly went. No, this is this is what we're going for first. And you've got where are rules? Here's the beta rules. Um, it starts off with uh, the two different types of lizard men army. So you've got the Sorgax and you've got the Arox. So you've got these two different sort of flavors of lizard men, depending whether they're hot or cold blooded. Mm. Um, but it's 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 really it's interesting because it it plays like a Warhammer style mass battle game in that you have base removal, which is why these are not multi base like you would see in other ten mil games. Mm. Uh, but it very much the the system is sort of aimed around a Warmaster style of play where you are moving big big units around the tabletop um to try and get your 10 mil jerry into position <laughs> again can i say so, no. that's, uh, that's a unit that one yeah, it really is, you know, much fatter than that giant jerry <laughs> but it's yeah it's it's really nice seeing them because they they have they have the the various types of reptiles. They also have several human armies, so the, it's mm-hmm. not just humans. You've got uh, like the different types Amazonians, depending on on where they're yeah. from. Yeah. yeah, which means they all have a sort of unique look and a distinctive way they play, mm-hmm. which I adore. I really like how they're putting the kind of reptilians in front and center because you said it. Mm-hmm. I think when it comes to me looking at games like this, I am kind of put off on the fact that it's always humans and dwarves and elves because I feel like so many fancy games on the tabletop do base around those particular yeah. races. And it is that would draw me in more in looking yeah. at different races, different species that are on and actually have the law behind them. It's just not side fluff and they get involved yeah. later. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's nice to see them focal point. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's uh, it's one of those ranges that, as you can see, obviously it has quite a lot of units already. So when the game actually fully launches in October, there's going to be plenty of people who yes. have already finished their armies. I would imagine. Uh, but there's also Giants mounted on rhinos. You say <sighs> why not? Why not? Why not? Uh, they also do. Um, they've also obviously they did terrain for tourists. They've also done terrain for um, Arcatoria as well. Uh, so you can buy things like little huts or, as you can see there, towers and stuff that you can siege, which is pretty awesome. Uh, I think they've got like little defenses and things that you can set up as well, which is really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, they, they've done a, a thorough job with the game that isn't even fully out yet, <laughs> which, oh. I think, which I think is very cool. I think yeah. for a company like Spellcrew, it's definitely the way to go because people could be picking these up to play other things yeah so they're they're yeah. they're getting yeah. it out there to get the miniatures out there and getting revenue in while they work on their own uh, game and the fact that they have 
a uh, they're really nice actually i might be picking those up for something i'm already <laughs> looking, I'm already looking at the pumpkin people <laughs> but, but the fact that somebody may be picking these up for warmaster or for fantastic yeah. battles or dbm or whatever it happens to be or hordes of the things mm. they can get money rolling in while the beta test is sitting there and people who are keen on trying the beta rules can give them a go it's a yeah. really simple system um yeah. So They've also said that they're very um, open to people getting involved and mm. helping them out with the stuff. So you'll find at the start of each of their rule books, there's sort of like a, if you have some interesting things you want to share with us or you want us to tweak or et cetera, blah, 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 send it to us via email and mm. we will nice. we'll have a think about it, which is really cool. Mm. Uh, and I think they've, they've been doing a lot more stuff sort of like community-based as well recently. Uh, so they've been doing things like little painting videos and live streams and all sorts of things as well, which is really cool. Um, like I think they showed off the sculpting of one of their big orc heroes recently, which was really awesome. Um, so yeah, they're, they're a, a company that has been around for a while and is very beloved by the community, I think. I know a lot of people who I've seen playing skirmish games, who I'm like, hey, that's a spellcraft model. And it's like, oh yeah, just like really like this, you know, dwarf. So I added him into my warband and stuff, which I think is really, really cool. So yeah. <laughs> How often nice are they skin. coming out with new releases? There's <laughs> usually something every month. Yeah. Um, nice. So uh, I think this prolific. month was... Yeah, this month was um, goblins, and I believe there's, or I guess, say, an orc towards the end of the, uh, July. Uh, previous to this, they've been doing some sort of updates to stuff, uh, so conversion bits and things for orcs because awesome. who doesn't love orcs? Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then they, they 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 always come out with like weird things, so like here's a forest spider because we just decided to sculpt one, which I think just, is really cool. <laughs> yeah, here's a ram with a massive sword. Can he even pick that up? He's not even got thumbs. <laughs> he doesn't. He just, <laughs> just manhandle onto his shoulder and then he's, let it drop he, onto he, people. He's, an, he's anime strong, so it doesn't matter how small he is. It's entirely he possible he's a do. squire. I think, he, of, yeah, I think he holds the, the blade for the big monitor that we saw before. You yeah, see, that, so. that makes uh, yeah. sense. That will put it between his horns. That'll yeah. do. It doesn't need to be able to wield it, but yeah, these, <laughs> this is this month's new releases, and there's awesome. some gorgeous stuff in there as well. Which I suppose moves us on to the the likes of the conversion yeah. bits and bobs they do as well. Um, so a lot, like a lot of companies, uh, they also do a bunch of uh, conversion bits for popular games like um, Warhammer and Warhammer Forty Thousand. So nice. if you like the idea of theming your forces around uh, a bunch of these sort of different conversion pieces, then you can definitely do that. Uh, they do a range of different heads. They've got bodies. They've got legs. They've got guns. They've got accessories that you stick off the back, like backpacks and stuff as well. So if uh, you were looking to maybe, as orcs are going to be the flavor of the month um, throughout July and maybe into August as well, I would imagine. And then, of course, you've got October coming up late this year as well. Uh, perfect opportunity to go and pick up some heads and sort of play around with them and, and do some funky stuff. As I say funky, I, I I think it was on purpose because I just saw these disco heads. Disco nights. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so if you want to make disco space marines, yes. if, you can if, you, that, so. if you want to make space marines based on the greatest movie ever made, then this would be the headset <laughs> that you would use. Just for anybody in the audience who may be worried about that. <laughs> Uh, oh, yeah, so, yeah. there's some amazing stuff, and it's not all sci-fi um, because you've got enough stuff in there to do fantasy and post-apocalyptic as well. Yeah, yeah. And and having things like um, even the the transverse Roman s crests there, nice, which could easily go on to fantasy Roman orcs or dwarves as easily as on to some form of uh, space marine boys and you know, boys. It's it's entirely up to you, but uh, yeah. but there's some lovely stuff you can do in there. And again, it's a list that goes on and on and Ariston, because I think there are multiple pages of this. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Uh, as we say, they've been around for 10 years now. So seven pages worth of accessories and commercial bits. Incredible. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> there's a door. There oh, you go. Uh, but yeah uh, if you're interested in this stuff go and check them out over at Mm. spellcrow.com loads of awesome stuff there if you're into your fantasy skirmish stuff go and check out Umbraturis if you like 10 mil stuff go and check out Arcatoria if you like conversion bits go and pick up some orcs and stuff from that section and then they also have this new stuff which is coming out which is now just codenamed W oh um which is very, very cool. They've just said it's going to be a dynamic fantasy war game. Great. I'm thinking maybe rank and flank 28 mil, maybe, possibly. It would make uh, sense because they've already got the, the sort of the skirmishy game with Umbra. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, they're going to try and hit all the uh, all the targets, as it were, with their range of miniatures. And it makes sense because they can all flow between the two, which is really awesome. So, yeah. yeah, units between three and 12 models. 
That Sounds like old school Warhammer to me. <laughs> Models move in skirmish, but thanks to the formation of oh. ranks, they gain special bonuses for being ranked up. Oh, it's very similar to Cronopia for for all the young kids in the audience. Uh, oh. I'll just leave that one out there for you. But yeah, that'll be, that, that'll be <laughs> fantasy. Yeah, so that'll be interesting to see where they go with that. And I imagine mm-hmm. we'll get a beta rule set as well for people to, to keep yeah, an eye yeah. on. That I, a slow peel reveal on that name. For, I for, know. Place your bets now. For us, play who, hangman. Yeah. For those of us who are into their board and card game stuff, they do actually have a game fully based around the Danak. Uh, I mean, if I'm saying that wrong, by the way, please correct me in the comments. Uh, but in if you go into board games, there's actually an entire card game based around the pumpkin people. No. Um, oh, yeah. right. <laughs> you, you are packing so. to move. You're not allowed it. Don't buy this. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Really neat little card game that you can play that they came out with. I think it was either last year or the year before, uh, which is just something you can dive into and play. And it's basically just a way for them to show off their nice artwork and, cool. and hunt for weird treasures in the, the pumpkin gardens. The that wilds. sounds damn adorable. Five yeah. Yeah. Mm. Better get my aubergines <laughs> together. Create a salad. We'll be great. Yeah. So, yeah. Sweet. Well, Something for everyone. Well. Yeah. So that's handy if people want to see that and see how it plays. That is a stunning India of the Week, Ben. Congratulations. Well done. Mm-hmm. Thank you to uh, Carl, part of our community, for uh, pointing me back towards that and reminding me that we hadn't talked about them yet. So there you mm. go. We are going to take a swish. And when we come <laughs> back, we'll be looking at all of the news that we've seen this week. Coming to you from the center of Northwestern Europe. Covering board games, war games, card games, and all that sh- you love. It's the Muck f- News. <laughs> so, back with some news. Uh, we had something new from Games Workshop to begin with. Oh my god, what the hell? Shock, horror. I know, what oh, the hell's god. going on, right? Uh, so, they had a Dominion celebration day last mm. weekend, mm-hmm. which was to obviously celebrate the launch of Dominion, which is the was that battle box for Age of Sigma. Uh, but they also took some time to show off what's coming up in the next couple of months for both the Stormcast Eternals and the Auric War Clans. Um, so new set of miniatures that they showed off, started with Lord Commander Bastion Carthalos, as you can see there, who was an absolute, as we've started to say this, this episode, unit Um, (laughs) (laughs) he has been gifted with his own suit of thunderstrike armor as you can see there and he is ready to kick ass and take names in the mortal realms Mm -hmm. um indrasta can't do everything herself and so she has other people around to to um do some damage as well very cool looking miniature there love the style of it kind of got like a a very sort of like zeus look i think which is really cool yeah uh, which is uh, seeming to pop up on a lot of the Stormcast Eternal miniatures at the moment, I think, especially when you look at the very stylized helmets with the beards and stuff. And cheek. Well, I just assumed that was the dwarves forcing their art on everybody who has to I, I think they're armor. like, I think they're like, oh yeah, this is Sigma. He he he. It's actually Grungy. <laughs> um, so yeah. <laughs> I think what I find about Makes this sense. one is that I, I could have, they could have put him in a bit more of a battle pose. I'd like to see him with like his hammer up, like yeah. ready to bring it down on someone or something, and that would be really cool. Um, but I, I guess at least you've got the red to strike I suppose exactly. that's not as terrible yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, other than he, that he's just hit with yeah. a bit of a, a fan from the front you'd say. <laughs> heroic wind yeah um, yeah so um, he obviously comes with that massive hammer and he can also rain down uh, thunderbolts and lightning very very frightening on uh, his enemies uh, on the tabletop which is very mm. cool uh, following on from that uh, we also have a new relictor so the relictors are kind of like if you wanted to make a comparison, a little bit like chaplains from one of 40,000 and the Space Marines. Mm. Uh, we had Lord Relictors uh, in the first edition and the second edition, obviously, of uh, Age of Sigma, which were very cool. Uh, kind of like really awesome skull helms and like, stuff like that. This is a Knight Relictor. So it's someone that fills up the uh, sort of like the pecking order just below the Lord Relictors and stuff. Um, Going to be saving souls and damning souls, no doubt, with that uh, amazing maul mace uh, that he's got in his hands there. Very cool looking miniature. I, I like that a lot of the stuff that we're seeing here is a little bit more sort of like, um, I want to say the word realistic, but mm. I think it's just the, the, the armor is slimmer and more fitting. Yeah. And it, it looks like it would lend itself a lot more to people painting it a little bit more grim darky, which I think is very, very cool indeed. Uh, are, are you uh, suggesting that we're going to see these across Primaris 40k armies? I mean, <laughs> Bloody Angel players are just Maybe. pretty. Well, yeah. 
losing it over that. Because... These are these are basically all sons of San Genius, aren't they? Yeah. So, oh, yeah. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, we've also got a look at some of the new units that are going to be coming up as well. Uh, so we nice. have the units of the Vanquishers. Um, so we'd seen spear armed, and I can't remember that. I think they were Vigilors last time. Uh, these Could are be. the Vanquishers. Uh, there, there's always some weird cod name. Yeah. Cod <laughs> just, just so you have no no yeah. uh, chance of remembering it ever. Exactly. Uh, but these are the Vigilor, uh, the Vanquishers, sorry, which come with those swords, as you can see there, looking yeah. pretty awesome. Uh, I quite like the design of those. Again, nice to see them doing kind of like big, huge plates of armour, but mm. also the cloaks and that kind of thing as well. So yeah, there's yeah. some nice textures for you to play around with. And again, Grim Dark them up. Not that mm. I'm good. Not that I'm looking at these and basically thinking the same thing, uh, but uh, <laughs> that may be what's happening. Um, the, so yeah, there's a couple of the shots of the uh, the vanquishers there, but we also had the vigilors. Um, so I am a massive fan of any miniature that comes oh, with a bow. I think yeah. bows are awesome. Archers yep. are cool. Yeah, uh, and so seeing storm cast with bows is very neat as well. Obviously, a lot of people will know, hey, we had Judicators before that. But mm. yeah, these are the slightly less heavily armoured versions of those in the in the form of the Vigilors there, yeah. with sword and bow at the ready. Um, very, very reminiscent of the old sort of like Shadow Elves. Um, I was thinking set. the same thing, the Shadow um, Warriors, yeah. Yeah, the Shadow Warriors, yeah, from uh, Warhammer Fantasy Battles. Got a, a very similar feel in terms of the way that they holding their bows and swords. No, uh, not they, just that, but the haircuts on them. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Shave with top knots. Yeah, you know, I mean uh, that is clearly an elf. It's quite elf stuff. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, yeah, cool looking stuff there when it comes to those. Then obviously none of these are going to be replacing any of the stuff that's come previously. They're just sort of new additions to the range. Mm -hmm. Nice. Uh, but yeah, looking very cool there on the front for the Vigilors. And then we also got a look at the full unit pack that's going to be coming out for the Annihilators. Uh, nice. So you've seen these guys before. They're the guys with those massive mm -hmm. hammers that will basically be mortal wounding the enemy to hell and back. Uh, come in that huge, massive armor that's not at all to do with Terminators. No, no, um, no, no sorry, Bob. <laughs> uh, I like that they've given the uh, sort of helmetless options, but I think, especially for the Annihilators, who for me have always kind of had that look of like, we're grim and nasty and we're just going to smash you to pieces. I think the helmets <laughs> give a little bit more of that kind of like, I'm going to say street cred. Uh, I think it looks very cool with the helmets on, but uh, yeah. hopefully we'll see a nice mixed kit for that. I think the cheek guards look a bit weird without the helmets they on. They do. It's like yeah. somebody's just stapled them on and walked They've away. They've got the bearded helmets, haven't they? And mm, they're yes. really cool. Yeah. And with the cheek, yeah. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. It's kind of, weirdly, a little bit like the Primaris helmets, where the hmm. back of the helmet is actually still part of the neck piece and the mask comes off yeah. Oh, yeah, in yeah, some yeah. cases. So, no idea how that happened. Yeah. <laughs> Craftsmanship, that yep. There you go. Uh, Gongli <laughs> has been working hard. Uh, <laughs> but on the other side of things, we also got some more miniatures for the Oric War Clans. Mm. Uh, so we got Swamp Boss, Swamp Boss Scumdreck uh, is the leader walking around on that massive, mutated, weird reptilian creature there. Mm. Again, really liking what they're doing with the Oryx here. Uh, I think it's nice to see them doing something, as Warren's pointed out in the past, that makes the part of me look a little bit more evil, I think, yes. which is really cool. Um, these guys menacing. are very much more, uh, yeah, menacing, uh, much more dedicated to sneaking around in the background, stealing souls away into the swamps, and uh, no doubt torturing them. For mm. information and stuff and probably to eat them uh right. but yeah very I cool like the stuff. return of the man catcher to go yeah, with the yeah. cage there as well so yeah. uh, which you'll see in a, which you'll see in a little bit more detail when we look at the sludraker beast but uh, mm. we also have this kit can be turned into a snatch boss as well so if you don't want to make it as the particular named character oh. scumdrek there you can make it as a uh, your own snatch boss and uh <laughs> which means a very different thing in uh in English, yeah. now I think about it, but there we go. Yeah. Uh, but uh, uh, we have the Snatch Boss and Sludge, Sludge Raker, who uh, is looking very cool indeed. Like the sort of style of these that they've that they've gone with, kind of reminds me a little bit of, um, as we said in the past, Jackson's Orcs mm. from uh, The Hobbit yeah. and stuff, which is, you know, so. pretty cool. I quite like the way that Azog was presented, even though it wasn't quite what I wanted. But um, Yeah, well, you kind of everything. Cool, so. I like the no. fact that they've gone for this rat-like lizard as well. Yeah. It's not yeah. just yeah, it's your usual sort of... Um, big boar or anything else that you would normally associate with previous yeah. works? Uh, it, it's nice that I think the Mortal Realms and Age of Sigmarin as a whole has allowed them to be a little bit more inventive with the beasts that, mm. that they create. Mm. Like, uh, like 
when when it first came out, obviously we didn't really have dragons, but we had Dracoth, so we had them mm-hmm. kind of like mix messing around with that and changing things up. I think we've seen it a lot more with a lot of stuff they've done for the um, Stormcast Eternals with the, yeah. the, the the creatures of the Vanguard ride, mm. what the Ideneth have, you know, big huge floating sharks swimming through the sky and that kind of mm. thing, and then obviously what we're seeing here with the Uruk War Clans as well. I really really like the front claws because you just notice on the back claws they've been worn down yeah. for use. Yeah. I really like that. Very cool. Nice feature. Mm. Nice Clearly that means he needs to buy. A scratching post for his I think so. <laughs> sludge beast. Needs his nails yeah. done. Sludge raker scratching post. Yeah. Mm. Um, now uh, we have uh, even more man catchy things, and also don't piss off Dobby because otherwise oh, Dobby no. gets mad. And this is what happens when Dobby gets mad. You took his sock. <laughs> now he's out to kill you. Uh, in actual fact, this is a marsh crawler slogoth, <laughs> um, sure. not Dobby. Um, so you so say this is. Uh, a type of troll within the world of uh, Age of Sigma mm. that has yeah. no doubt been uh, twisted and broken by the goblins and the grots within the uh, Auric War Clans and is now out to hunt for umis and stuff within the swamps so they can drag them away and as we said at the beginning cook them probably mm. uh, but yeah oh, looking yeah. very cool indeed uh, I'm sure that I'll please some ogre man eaters out there um, we also have some really cool stuff in terms of the units as well so we've got more of a look at the gut rippers so this is your kind of like classic line infantry that you're going to be using for the auric war plans if yeah. you wanted to go down the sort of like the um, cruel boys route mm. uh, they come with those really awesome sort of sh- um, face shields which are very reminiscent of um, old Warhammer fantasy battles yeah. um, shields for the, the orcs and the goblins and things which is pretty cool everybody loves an evil son Mm. would you paint these green would you i would paint them uh warcrafty orange i think Mm. uh to sort of yeah orange or flesh tone brown i'd say like a like flesh tone brown yeah Yeah. i think that'd be really cool and then play around with the fact that they've got leather on them but paint it in different styles i think Mm. yeah yeah cool i'd love to be able to like do war paint and stuff i think it'd be nice to try and play around with that as well because you get the idea that these guys would like love doing that kind of stuff. I think it's yeah. really neat. Uh, but yeah. So obviously these kits are going to be a little bit more pliable than the mm-hmm. kits that we saw in uh, Dominion because obviously those are all push fit ones. These will be your traditional kits from Games Workshop uh, if you want to go pick these up in the next couple of months. And then finally, we also had some new stuff um, for the Bolt Boys as well. <laughs> Bolt Boys. Uh, so <laughs> if you're looking to take down enemies from range, then you have some new Bolt Boys as part of this uh, this set with their massive, huge crossbows. Again, very Jackson's uh, The Hobbit, I think. Yeah. But, uh, but uh, looking pretty They're like harpoon yeah. crossbows. They are, yes. They are the kind of crossbows that would literally pin you to the floor. Yes. Uh, so they can come <laughs> and get you. And I think that's probably what they're attempting to do. Um, all of these units will be available as part of the new battle tomes that are coming out. So they've got the two new battle tomes leading off third edition of Age of Sigma. <laughs> we've got one there for the Auric War Clans, which will contain not just the rules for the Cruel Boys, as we've seen here, <laughs> but also all of the other orcs that have existed in the past as well. So you'll have uh, um, sort of like all your what, uh, savage orcs and that kind of thing as well in there as well, which is pretty neat. And then, of course, a massive tome for the Stormcast Eternals okay. with a rather impressive looking annihilator on the front of it but to deliver some smackdown to a Chaos Warrior. Um, but the amount of units that the Stormcast have now, I, I, I cannot see how that's not going to be a massive tome. Um, but yeah, yeah. We, will, uh, we will see what the page count is like when that comes out. Yeah, I imagine they'll squeeze them in. Half a page yes. per unit. It's still, only, <laughs> it's still only going to be about 200 pages. You're We've written need, too many war scrolls. You're going to need a lot of googly eyes to put throughout that time. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, very much so. Uh, but moving from one realm of fantasy to another, mm-hmm. I am a big fan of the Dragon Prince. Uh, if anyone's watched that show on Netflix, it's from the guys that did, uh, well, some of the guys anyway, that did Avatar. So if you're a fan of Avatar The Last Airbender and Legend of Korra, they were also involved with The Dragon Prince. And this is a really awesome uh, show that is well worth diving into. Very kiddy, but, you know, whatever. I'm a big kid. I love it anyway. Uh, but they have been working, well, the creators of Dragon Prince have been working with Brother Wise Games to create a new game, which is called battle charged and the reason is in there is because if i can get more people to talk about this there's the more chance that i'll get this shipped internationally (laughs) selfish (laughs) Uh, the reason we do the show to be fair exactly Uh, so this is a two to six player board game uh where you you will make a team of heroes and or villains you can either make it all villains or all heroes or do a mix of the the two depending on what characters you like from the show and you'll be battling it out in those arenas as you can see there uh to 
to get three knockouts and then you win. Um, as I say, it can also be played with up to six players. So you can also increase the size of the teams or you can do it so that two people are controlling two people on one team and then you switch yeah. it around like that. So it's not just one person versus one person, which is pretty awesome. Uh, the gameplay is very quick and easy to dive into. Um, the actual sort of like basics of the game are based on your hero card so your hero card will have a basic action and a basic move you can do and then you also have underneath it your health and also a charge spot so that charge spot will have a dice on it and as you play cards from your hand from your personal deck mm -hmm. will charge up your energy that you can use the abilities in game so maybe it would be summoning lightning and blasting your foes away nice. or it would be doing a massively awesome move with one of the sort of dark sorcerers as well within the game which is pretty cool um Looks really fun and quick mm. to play. I watched a couple of previews of this so far. I think it'd be really neat to like sit down and play with the family. Or and I, I think because it's so quick to play, and you've got kind of like this sort of like half an hour to forty-five minutes sort of like setup and playtime. Mm -hmm. It's one of those things where if you lose, you can be like, ah, okay, well, I'll try again and I'll mix these characters around and I'll try and do something yeah, yeah. different. Which I think is really always nice to see, especially with something that's a little bit more sort of like kid weight. I think as well, which is good. Our work looks nice because it's yeah. obviously been taken yeah. to the show as well. That's what I was going to say. It looks like it's all been yeah. taken from the show. Um, does it look like it's going to be a draft type of game? Because it looked at the start that she was potentially they drafting. Some, um, uh, dice as well. Yeah, so the dice are to do with the energy sort of um, focus of this. So everything else is just card based, but the, okay. the dice there is just for you to count up your energy. When you play the game, you can play in a draft variant. So you could be right. like, well, I'm going to pick Callum right. and I'm going to pick Zora or sure. something. Uh, or you could just be like, I like these characters. I want them. I want to play them. Uh, they have also put a bunch of sort of like um, alternate rules at the back of the book. Mm -hmm. um, so the gameplay is meant to be very simple and easy to play. They're kind of like very easy line of sight rules and that kind of thing. But they've also put in some additional things for those people that want to maybe take, take it to the next level and play around with it a little bit more. Uh, but yeah, looking really cool. Love the Dragon Prince. If you've not watched it, it's worth it. You know, Avatar was very kiddie, but really enjoyable. Uh, and I, I would heartily recommend it. Uh, as long as you can get through some of the weird animation quirks in the first series, the rest of them are, are very, very good. But yeah, back this maybe, you know, go over and do a little pre-order thing and then maybe they'll, you know, send stuff out to the, the UK and the EU. Maybe that'd be nice. No, maybe, maybe, there you go. <laughs> Who so knows? With, with the subliminal <laughs> drumming there as well to really ram that one home. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. Well, I was in the minds of Moria then. <laughs> well, felt that way to all of us. <laughs> so, Free, you're going to be taking us into some Dystopian fleets. Dystopian Wars. Dystopian mm. Wars is seeing itself a new faction this month. There's some new releases and the Union are joining the fray. So, with the first mm. Union battle fleet that's come in, the Constitution battle fleet is on pre order as we speak. So, ready for the release at the end of the month. I know a lot of been people have been waiting for the American. So mm -hmm. everybody's excited about this one. So the Union have approved their tech over time. They've stepped into the arena before their nemesis, the Crown, which I know a lot of community are waiting for as well. And American <laughs> the American glory is striking back on both land and sea. So heading up as the main flagship for this set for the Constitution uh, battle class Bat oh, constitution class battleship the main <laughs> purpose of the ship is to head down rivers and bolster the defense against the confederate and team up as a troop so their paddle wheels allow them to sort through the seas allowing the union to achieve that american glory they fight nobly for so along with the main battleship you've got the frontline squadrons as well ready to support them from heavy damage so you've got the yorktown the intrepid the reliant and the lexicon class cruisers so they can soar ahead with a bit of hard endurance and take on form in an enemy fire so it's quite a bit there you've also got the Farragut frigates, they're both speedy and agile, so they allow players to preempt and overcome the enemy vessels with speed and agility. So these little beasts are absolutely lethal when a pack. So in large numbers, they've got the ability to take on some gruesome battleships, the big flagships as well mm. um, on enemy lines. So there's quite a lot coming out from Dystopian Wars this month as oh, well. Yeah. So there's yeah. the, the Descartes battle fleet as well and the Imperium support squadrons. That was the one that was in the two player starter set um, for part of the Enlightened faction and the reinforcements for the Imperium as well. So it is coming out thick mm. and fast and almost getting all of the factions out on the table. Just in, nice. just in time for the 4th of July, they announced this, I, I see. <laughs> that, was, that was well planned. Yeah, I, yeah. I can't help but think about, um, oh, Jeremy Clarkson talked about the greatest, uh, oh, it was one of the ice, 
Antarctic ice uh, convoys. Mm -hmm. And on the 4th of July, weirdly enough, they encountered some uh, German resistance as they were attempting to get to Archangel. And one of the American ships went full speed towards the enemy, then did a handbrake turn in a destroyer. <laughs> and when they spun around 90 degrees, fired all of the guns. And wow. the, the Germans just panicked, dropped all of their torpedoes far like, too early, and then away. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so that's uh, that's a mad, how I imagine these to play. A lot of speed yeah. and a lot of broadsides and guns. Yeah. Lots of explosions. Very nice looking kits. Yeah, uh, cracking really like the, stuff. the options and stuff they've built into these. Mm -hmm. Very cool indeed. Mm -hmm. uh, we've obviously done some painting and stuff of some dystopian mm -hmm. wars over the last couple of weeks. John had a, a hand at one of the cruisers that was the Yangtze ones, was it? It was the battleships, but uh, very, mm -hmm. very awesome stuff there. Um, so yeah, will be no doubt very awesome for people to dive into and have a pop at. I'm going to play around with some sort of rusty techniques, I think, on some of those. That'd nice. be really cool. We don't polish our holes. <laughs> that, that is terrible. No. Absolutely <laughs> terrible. Dude, rusty ships mean sunk ships. I'm just no. saying. Yeah. Yeah. Rusty ships mean uh, that people Hard work. Uh, yeah, no. they underestimate you. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Learn them in by how shoddy you yeah. look. Anyway, <laughs> speaking of shoddy looks, <laughs> Rumbly Slam. Yeah. So uh, if you are in the mood for a little bit of a fantasy game with a twist, mm -hmm. then uh, TT Combat have bought out a new expansion this weekend for Rumble Slam. So Rumble Slam is their fantasy wrestling game where you'll take on a team of luchadors or whatever and uh, sort of kick ass and take names in the ring. But this new set called Tables, Ladders and Chests, <laughs> uh -huh. uh, little spin there. Uh, gives you a whole bunch of new game modes and sort of uh, mechanical um, benefits in your games. Mm. So the tables, ladders, and chairs. Uh, tables, ladders, chairs, and chests, and all that kind of thing. The ladders and the, the tables, obviously, you can use them as weapons, nice. but you can also use them to get extra height. And height means nice. more amazing aerial moves, mm. dropping elbows on your foes and all sorts of things like that, which is very cool indeed. You do the combo. Can you stand on top of a ladder with a chair? I, you know what? I wouldn't put it past it. So. Makes sense. <laughs> There's also a new game mode included in this, which is called Dosh Grabbers. Nice. Uh, so in Dosh Grabbers, you're not just trying to knock out uh, or uh, pin your opponents. You are actually trying to get as much loot as you can and hold on to it. However, not all loot is created equal. Mm. And some of your loot may in fact be a mimic about to eat your wrestler whole, as you can see there. The chest has gone weird. Um, but yeah, Very. if you're looking for a new game mode to play, then they've included that in there, which is pretty awesome as well. Oh. There's also that massive statue, as you can see, uh, which could be used simply as a podium to put your winning wrestlers, nice. or you could use it in-game. And obviously, with the addition of the, these new height mechanics, you could do a massive elbow drop or a pile driver off the top of that yeah. outstretched hand and crush your opponent into the canvas. We all love TLC matches. It'll be a suplex off the top of the ladder into a table. Yeah, go yeah, fill, yeah. Go fill Hardy Boys on exactly. people. That's yeah, the whole yeah, point yeah, of Rumble yeah. Slam. Yeah. <laughs> but if you are interested in Rumble Slam, as I know a lot of people are, when we put this up, everyone was like, oh, this looks cool. Uh, we have uh, a couple of Let's Plays, one from the new edition of the game, uh, which is by TT Combat, uh, within our little game hub. So you can go and check that out and see some... Um, very funny gameplay in that one uh, where they were gesticulating as much as they were playing the game. So, uh, yeah, very cool. It is the whole point of wrestling. Exactly. Yeah. Or, sorry, Rasslin, which Rasslin. is, I believe, how it's yeah. pronounced. Rasslin. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, that's that's what you want. You want these cheesy bits. You want the, the mic drops. Oh, yeah. You, want, uh, yes. you want all of the talk up beforehand and then you, you want, get in the ring. You want someone to say at some point, give him the chair at some point. <laughs> <laughs> also, get his hand out of the mimic. <laughs> <laughs> he needs that. <laughs> Won't be able to put his belt on with only one hand. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That'll be terrible. There's the mess. The mystery of the missing hand. Yes, mm. that requires some sort of sleuth free. Mm. Yes, well, with kids are right, a game with another tabletop game that's caught my eye. So their recent announcement of Turbo Sleuths brings a bit of a murder mystery and investigations to the tabletop. So you'll be working against the clock and against your opponent's attempt to crack a code simultaneously in a puzzle speed game environment. So there's been a murder, there's been plenty of suspects for yourself and your opponents to query. As players need to go head to head, 
and then ahead again against the clock to fight time in attempted to decrypt and decipher a brutal case before the murderer gets off scot free. Mm. So one wrong move or decision from any player, the murderer is the ability to escape and there are eight of you potentially up to eight players uh, attempting to crack the code so it's going to get pretty messy and pretty panicky well for me anyway i don't do well against the clock (laughs) Um, but it will be absolutely hilarious to watch the mistakes unfold when everybody's working in a frenzy and uh, trying to crack the code so it takes about 20 minutes to play and you do not have to have a full party of investigators easier so if you do want to go in a smaller chance of winning which is more than likely what I'd like. <laughs> uh, it can be played between two players as well. So how I would tackle this is play it with two, succeed, get the game mechanics down, then smash a party of eight people. It's fine. So um, you can, the game is laid out in two different phases. You've got an analysis phase and a solution phase. So each player has got to work out both the suspect and the murder weapon, and they need to work off of cue cards, clue cards, sorry, uh, where players will respond with their answer cards, hoping to catch the killer and the weapon mm. to be then be awarded a score token. So they need to use an in-game solution key to attempt to find the correct answer. So nice. if this does sound easy to you, there is an advanced stabby stabby mode too, if you do want to work well under <laughs> with pressure. With actual daggers. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's there. Yeah, that comes mm. with the game. Um, but with there's more objectives, and you've got to jump for a lot more hoops to catch nice. the killer. So, yeah. the strategy. What I do like about this is the strategy is up to the player to decide because mm-hmm. you've got to keep an eye on the other players. You've got to keep an eye on the clock. You've got to keep an eye on what you're doing. So it's your own play style against everything and against all odds. So Mm -hmm. if you are up to scratch in solving a mystery and catching a killer and a game that does not involve Colonel Mustard in the kitchen with a lead (laughs) pot against the clock, then uh, the game is going to be released in August. So be sure to Very cool. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm just trying to dice, decipher the card. Never mind what's on the card. <laughs> God, I have no idea what's happening here. No, 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 no whiz kids. It'll actually be a lot simpler than you think. It will. Is, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. But, um, I, I quite like games like this. Like I obviously enjoy doing the massive, huge murder mysteries of like Sherlock Holmes, consulting yes. detective and stuff. But a smaller game that seems like on par with this is one called Murder in Hong Kong, mm-hmm. which has a similar sort of thing, except one of the people at the table is like this murderous person. They're trying to like throw people off with clues and things. But this looks really neat. It's kind yeah. of like a 20 minute game yep. sort of brings me in mind of games like spy fall and stuff as well which is really yes. cool so um yeah I, i'd be tempted to try this one out especially as we may be looking back towards conventions and stuff towards the oh, end yeah, this year for sure. and into next year as well so sweet sweet to the beat yeah well i get the chance to talk now yay me it's <laughs> jerry sky <laughs> It's like they were pushing me out of the show. They're worried I'm going to say <laughs> Degenesis again. Oh, but I promise I won't. Uh, but Mantic have uh, recently put up for pre-order the new expansion for Armada. Uh, so Mantic's delightful game of sea-based smashing uh, is getting the first expansion with Seas of Flame nice. and a magical deck. They are separate yeah. and distinct, uh, which is something that people should be aware of you don't need the magic deck mm-hmm. although it does change up your games um but the the supplement for armada is going to include a whole host of things that you can do to change up how you play your games in the world of panathor so it adds um five new fleets elf twiglet kin varanger <laughs> northern alliance that is their name and salamanders and they've yep. previewed some of these models uh, in an open day recently as well they're also adding flyers to nice. some but not all factions mm-hmm. um which work in the same way squadrons do as far as sort of movement goes so they're very nimble quite quick able to get around the board and cause yep. hassle to people nice. um and it'll be fascinating to see how this varies the gameplay because we've got ships coming in we've got the big xl ships have arrived now uh flyers add another level on top mm. of the the game so you can see this whole change in the the meta coming through yeah. mm-hmm. also uh mantic previewed some of these and got feedback on the dwarf flyer which people hated so they took the dwarf and that's flyer why that's out. not there then oh. <laughs> that is why that is not there so dwarves are getting a flyer but the community went and doesn't feel like a dwarf flyer to me right. it looks like something abyssal dwarves would have it was like a, a flying bat maggot worm thing that they'd got How out of a weird. cave somewhere yeah, yeah. Interesting. um i, I I liked it, but um, but it's nice that even though they were coming up to pre-order, they still went, you know what, the community have spoken, the people That's who are playing done. this game don't want these, we'll yeah. go back. Uh, so the, the 
the batworms will disappear for a while and possibly <laughs> or reappear come back in the future. As the abyssals, maybe in the future. So. Yeah, I mean that's yeah. it's all very very possible. Mm -hmm. uh, there's also the magic cards. So currently, there's a limited amount of magic in Armada uh, because they want, like all of Mantic's games, it's about the fleet slash army and how they are played rather than game winning big exploding mm -hmm. spells. However, this is an optional set of spells that you can add in. Uh, some are generic that can be used by all fleets. Some are specifically tied. So you'll get a little card that say orcs have access to these spells. Right. Basilians have access okay. to these spells. So it changes up. Not everybody will have all of the spells in the same way that not everybody has all of the types of ship. Twiglet can don't have XL <laughs> ships. For example, they're, they're very... Uh, creepy nasty fleets have to do without um but it's it's great to see armada pushing on and sort of expanding um, yeah, some yeah. of this stuff will be coming over the course of the rest of this year i think some of it is starting to fall into 2022 so you'll get nice. the fleet lists before you get the the ships but it means you can play around and start Very building and designing your yeah. fleet beforehand yeah. and i'm a big fan of armada i do like how it plays i i really like the uh, like I, I can see that why they've included the contraptions and machinery and stuff. I think that's mm -hmm. cool, but I really like the monsters. Like I love the fact that you've got yeah, that yeah. massive, huge fiery Phoenix and there's like bone dragon and stuff. Yeah. That is what works for me with this. Yeah. Cause I love the idea of a dragon, like freaking dive bombing a boat and not getting shot oh, full of yeah. holes. Spoilers. Yeah. Uh, but, <laughs> uh, but, yeah. Well, I mean, apart from the the flyers, they've added a whole host of other bits and bobs as well. So mm -hmm. um, there's new upgrades for the ships. There's a campaign system, so you can mm -hmm. build that in. Your your ships and your crews can get better over time. Right. Some ships will actually start with veteran crews, depending on the, the nice. faction they're for. Uh, but likewise, they can take a bit of damage and, and become worse over time. Uh, and at the same time, uh, Ronnie's comic influence is still there so uh, there was a scenario in the first uh in the rule book actually called release the kraken where there was a kraken um just in fact i've got a kraken <laughs> the, the, this thing now the ships for armada are on that shelf over my head there they're very, oh, very yeah. small this would just rampage around the middle of the sea smashing things that's um, cool likewise in this with the new scenarios there's 10 of those only one i think has been named so far which is the hunt for dread orktober because, mm. God. because <laughs> at, no point, at no point will puns stop no. so you've, got, so you've got scenarios you've got the fleet lists and you've got uh, the campaign rules so i think this is probably going to be a must-have for very people cool. and if you want to pick up the whiz bang spell deck for more whiz bang in your games of armada you can certainly do that as well um so yeah we close out the news with uh, a really neat little partnership between loke battlemats who mm -hmm. uh, we are big fans of and i know a lot of people in the community love them and our talsorian games uh, who create the cyberpunk role-playing game heavens to betsy yes yeah, so yeah uh, we started with the heavens to betsy and we're ending with one so yes uh <laughs> cyberpunk red is out there in the wild as a role-playing game and also has loads of miniatures from miniature fight club as well mm -hmm. but also you need something to play your games on sometimes and so the folks at our talsorian approached loke and they have put together a partnership to make their cyberpunk battle mats which we have looked at in the past mm. official cyberpunk mats so now they come with a really badass little sticker on the front. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, you'll be able to buy both their big book and their giant book to use in your games. And as I say, um, as the role-playing game is out there and the miniatures are out there from Monster Fight Club as well, you've mm -hmm. now got no excuse not to dive in and give Cyberpunk a go on the tabletop oh, with a mat and miniatures. Jerry. <laughs> 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 you feel attacked, Jerry. I, I do. I just I, I feel a little, little bit triggered there. Uh, also, when we did look at the, the Luke battle maps, when we looked specifically, when we looked at these cyberpunk ones, I, I, we said at the time that these would be ideal yeah. for. Um, yeah, yeah, we did. The, the Art as Lauren mm -hmm. skirmish game or, or whatever they happen to pivot it as. But uh, yeah, it, it's a spectacular set of books. Uh, mm -hmm. I think they get an awful lot of use on the tabletop oh, anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it makes perfect sense and i hope that with this being sort of stickered up as cyberpunky official uh it will actually sort of spread the word about look mm. because that there's still a very niche small company yeah. in the industry yeah. so uh, it can only help but uh give them greater attention across the the industry yeah that i would love to see them get the to play around with more stuff and different companies and doing new partnerships and things because their stuff really really is good like i've seen so many people using their mats um for like 
ranges of shadow deep and stuff so mm-hmm. rather than building a, an entire table just using those books opening them out and playing That's games fantastic. on that because it yep. works just as well for skirmish games as it does for gridded um, rpgs and stuff mm-hmm. as well so yeah it's fantastic and speaking of luke Ooh. i've had a chance to have a look at the big box of adventure volume one so oh, let's yeah. have a look at that now okay the luke valley of peril big box of adventures so this is a um, departure from luke's usual uh, map books instead they've, they've come up with these boxes which has everything inside it for you to generate your own scenarios and adventures um, for rpgs could be used for tabletop games as well uh, you'll see the maps are more than sufficiently large for that this box contains 24 maps so it's a set of 12 uh, double-sided 300 plus tokens um, including the important tavern to start all of your adventures and then various um, creature or encounter tokens the book itself and it is a book see pages contains these um, sets of maps so we have the dungeon hall the forest road lost caves ruins barren hill and the old homestead Uh, and a nice feature you'll see when we start looking at these is that things like the forest road ruins and old homestead um, that include some forestry parts well, they all uh, are on different map packs, so you can combine these. You, uh, a set of maps is um, two foot by four foot when you have all four out. So those three sets together could make a six foot uh, by four foot table if you want to play some larger games or a more linear narrative. Uh, they come in this side of the box. So I'm just going to pop these out. Before I move the box to one side, I'm just going to show you this. So the same size as half of one of the maps. So it's a, uh, what's that, 12 inch? Four, six, eight, ten and a half. Well, yeah, ten and a half inch by whatever it is, inches. Could be used as a dice tray. Could be used as a final encounter. It has a nice... You can just see it there. You've got the wall. So you've got a nice lipped place where you can roll all of your dice. Now, looking at the maps then. So there are three sets. We have, that's our forest road. This is our cave system. And then this last set is the homestead. They are all numbered. So there you go. So it will tell you 3A, 3B, C and D. And the obverse will be the fours. If I pop one of those open, you can see four there. Which means you can plan out your stuff in advance and write down which map should be going where so you're not having to faff around when you come to play. As you can see, double-sided glossy so that you can use dry race markers on them. Has some detail on there already and the definition and level of detail is excellent on the look maps as always grid it off with your one inch and the other side contains part of our dungeon setup which gives me real hero quest vibes with the sort of primary colored coded rooms inside the dungeon itself one thing i would have probably liked to see is instead of having the fixed doors is just have these completely walled off so that then you would draw your door in where you need your door. But that's a minor thing. Have another look at one of the other sections. So this part of the dungeon is sort of half of a great hall or a temple. Really striking light coming from this side. Uh, presumably a balrog's on its way or there is some sort of massive monumental fire ongoing. And on the other side, we have rocky outcrops and more trees. So these have similar texture for the ground cover. Here you can have just a a plain field, which is always nice. You might want to put your own things on there. Uh, The other side of this has the escarpment, 
So, an empty barren plain, but with more sort of ridge lines in it. My favourite piece is the homestead itself. So you have here a whole layout for a, could be a fortified homestead or just a pen to keep the animals in. There's even an outhouse up here in case you get caught short. Uh, and these rooms carry over to the terrain section as well. We'll come on to that in just a moment. Having a look at our forester's camp or adventurer's camp. You see everybody's got their weapon by their bedroll, which is very important in life, I feel. So the last set of maps is the cavern set, and these have some really striking visuals on them. So here you have illuminating crystals and phosphorescent fungi, uh, which nobody in the dungeon or cave system needs. As we learned, that's only there for adventurers. It's one of those phenomena we'll never be able to explain. It's quite a nice cavern system. Some nice big rooms for you to uh, throw in larger beasts or monsters when they work their way to the centre of your adventure. And the other side of the caverns bring us the lost ruins, so uncovered by the um, foresters or stumbled upon by the adventurers, depending on how you want to run things. You have a couple of large buildings and then some scattered remnants of an overgrown lost civilization. How did they die? We'll never know. There's a few sheets of terrain. Uh, some of it is double-sided for use on multiple maps, and some of it is double-sided in, in and of itself. Um, so here we have some form of massive beast, like an aurochs or a dinosaur, it's up to you. Some tents, could be orcs, could be barbarians, watchtower on the edge of the land. And if we flip it over, you can see that uh, we have some internals or a lava pit, or here we have, depending on your point of view, either ascending to a watchtower or maybe descending into the valley. It's entirely up to you. We also have some scatter. So bonfire, gold chest with all the coins where somebody had thought they were out and then got pulled back in. We even have a pit to throw the halfling into because that is what halflings are in parties for. And then some sarcophagus and uh, I suppose temple throne maybe for your lost dungeon. These also have some generic streams and uh, rocks and trees to put into the woodland version as well. You can see the dividing lines where you just trim it down. As I mentioned before, there is the homestead with our three buildings. And here we have the roofs for those buildings. But again, these are double-sided. So we have a ground floor. And then if I flip it over, we also have a sort of more interesting first floor, if you will. So you can set up some covered locations, which is a neat feature. There's also a couple of trap doors with some ladders below underneath. And then we come to our tavern. No adventure would be complete without starting in a tavern. And again, this is double-sided. So we have the tavern roof. Underneath that, we have our ground floor. And then we have a separate sheet with the first floor. So you've got your sleeping quarters, accommodation, study, could be a manor house. It's entirely up to you. I also like how they've done that. So you can have your roof and then have both the first and second floor out at the same time. So if your party splits, as your party will, they can jolly around to their heart's content. We also have an entrance to our cave. So if you're playing one of the bigger grass mats, then you can use this to segue into the cave system if you want to tie them together. Now, lastly, we have our token sheets. So there are three sheets and they are all double-sided. So you can plan out your encounters 
and you have a diverse amount of stuff here from your regular um, human encounters to all sorts of wildlife or plant-based creatures. Um, and then obviously some of the main staples of hack and slash dungeon crawlers, orcs and gnomes and goblins. A nice feature is that everybody is numbered. So you can easily keep track of stats and wounds. And there's also a set of larger creatures. So you've got your minotaurs, bears, man-eating trees, or particularly big ones over here with your massive saber-toothed cats, hydra, or Conan-esque snake. And again, all double-sided. So you've a lot of variety in here when you're putting your adventures together for your party. I like the octagonal look. It's nice. It's a lot of cutting. Um, so what I will say is these are one inch. So you can get yourself a one inch punch. Now, the round punches, so you will lose some of that lovely corner, um, but you can just very quickly punch out one of these uh, characters or all of the characters and bag them up um, because they're also color coded. As you can see, You've got these sort of terrifying humans are all purple, uh, green, blue, yellow, red. So you could bag them in individuals if you want specific styles for specific things. Greens all being creatures and browns all being horrible stuff you'll find in the forest. Um, it's a massive collection of stuff in a very small area, essentially, um, for the, the local uh, battle mat system changing from the books into this sort of box allows them to expand and do sort of more um, specific things. So we could potentially see maybe a city set. Volume one is the Valley of Peril, but there's no reason why we couldn't get a host of buildings and city terrain and city guards for maybe the next one and then have a castle assault uh, for the one after that. There is one final feature which eagle-eyed may have spotted, uh, which is you can get a free digital copy. So there is a code on the inside. Don't bother using this one. It's already been used. Um, so if you are planning on playing on something like a, a virtual tabletop or roll 20 or that type of thing, or even just playing uh, on a, a game of your own devising across Zoom or Discord, it means you have the contents of this in digital form. So you can uh, plan out your your sessions if you are currently playing remotely with your party uh, and then still have them for when you get a chance to get back into the physical realms with them and give it a go there. So there you have it, the Valley of Peril, mm. volume mm. one of the big box of adventure. I quite like what they're doing with that. Um, yeah, really? It should be interesting to see where volume five goes, mm. specifically volume five. Not worry about two, three, or four in no. between. But fine. But, but That's yeah, the epic it, level tier. That's I know. Yeah. But yeah, uh, if you like the look of that, don't forget you could win one mm. this week uh, by commenting below and being a subscriber to the channel. So get your comments in if you fancy getting your hand on the look box of adventure, mm. Valley of Peril. But now we're going to dive into the realm of Kickstarter. Did you win one of our prizes? Find out on our prize claim center over at ontabletop.com. Here we list all our previous prizes and those who have won. If you see your username, fill out the form to claim your prize. All prizes must be claimed within 30 days. So we start off with one for all games, not mm -hmm. to be confused with all for one. Uh, and musketeers and different. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Instead of musketeers, we have warrior mages, uh, because this is the one to four player cooperative fantasy adventure game by Mark Andre. Mm -hmm. called Soul Raiders, which sounds like the name of a Saturday morning TV show. <laughs> um, so this, as I said, is a one to four player cooperative fantasy adventure game. Obviously not very co cooperative if you're playing by yourself, but there mm. you go. Uh, where you will dive into a sprawling narrative campaign that lasts at its maximum around 30 hours. Nice. Each quest you undertake with your group or solo will take about two to four hours to complete. Uh, and there are obviously loads of them to dive into with mm. this one. The focus of the game 
uh, is that you're going to be playing as warrior mages, as I said, who mm-hmm. are all very different in the way that they approach things. They have their own unique decks of cards, and you'll be venturing around and exploring different cards uh, and uncovering the story of the realm and trying to sell, save people from the deadly evils that lie within the shadows. Mm-hmm. Um, the actual game itself, as I say, is cooperative, but in a very like I've bolded cooperative in the document mm-hmm. way um, because. Everyone has a shared health pool, stress pool, and exhaustion pool. Wow. So if you go off on your own Warren. and start getting mullered by monsters, exactly, Warren. yep, uh, <laughs> then you will bring everyone else down. So you have to work together as warrior mages in your adventures. Um, it's not just about fighting monsters, mm-hmm. though. It's also about diving into a weaving narrative storyline that follows the sort of like shadowy goings on in the background of the evil forces mm-hmm. as you try and work out what's happening. Um, everything looks really nice in terms of the artwork and the design for this one. Uh, I, I really love some of the artists that have, they've brought on board for this. Mm-hmm. I know a lot of the character art and stuff has been done by Mag- Matt. Magnalia, I think her name is. Or her last name is Vilnu, anyway. Uh, but uh, she has done amazing stuff in the past for the Lord of the Rings card game. You know, like Gandalf and all that stuff on that. Those right. like the art free. Oh yeah. my god! Oh. Never, no, never heard of that one. <laughs> uh, so she's been doing some amazing stuff, and there's also a huge team of artists that have done stuff for all the cards and things like that as well. Um, one of the nice things about the campaign itself, though, mm-hmm. is that it's fail forward. Um, so even if you lose a quest. Mm-hmm you don't have to go back and replay it. Instead, you read the alternative text on the back of your quest sheet. Uh, Yeah, here's some Mm -hmm. stuff here. Um, But yeah, sorry. Uh, You read the alternative text on the back of your play sheet, Mm -hmm. and this will guide you with some sort of like uh, minuses that will affect you throughout the rest of the story. This also means that the game has a little bit more replayability. There's a massive deck of cards for you to sort of like explore through anyway. So the path that you take one time you approach a quest might be very different from the next time. But then also if you've got the win and lose versions of that as well, then that means that every time you dive into it, maybe you're going to get better, maybe you're going to get worse at other quests, maybe you do something that changes things based on the cards you draw as well. All of that means that there will be some replay value built into the box, which is always nice to see uh, as well. Um, there are sort of two major pledge levels for the game as it stands. Uh, there is the sort of basic pledge level, which gets you the four miniatures of your Soul Raider warrior mages, uh, and then you get all the gubbins and the, the, the stuff that you need in order to play the game. But you can then go to the next level and get the deluxe pledge, which gets you, instead of standees, and I do like a standee, but instead of standees, you'll also get invisible versions of your characters, which is really cool, and also plastic versions of the portals and stuff that you can use in the game nice. as well, which is really nice. Um, really like the style of the, the miniatures in this. Um, it's got that really nice epic high fantasy feel to it. And I love yeah. the idea that it's warrior mages as well. Mm-hmm. So you're nice not idea. just all just spell casting. You're also, you know, going in with sword and shield and all sorts of things like that as well. So it's a nice little mix of different things. Mark andre in the past, is the man responsible for Splendor, uh, which then blew up into a billion different versions of Splendor. All the Splendors. Exactly. So yeah. he, <laughs> there's even a Marvel Splendor, which is actually pretty good, actually. But yeah, you're trying to find the Infinity <laughs> Gems. But, um, uh, but he definitely knows his mechanics. And so it's nice to have someone who is very sort of like solidly uh, sort of like in the right headspace for a game like this involved mm. with it. And then you've got all the wonderful storytellers as well that have dived in to give it a go as well. Um, looks really cool. I am teetering on the edge of backing. Um, I just think it seems like a really awesome sort of next step for me because I should play Gloomhaven, which was really good fun. I'd love to dive in and play this. And the fact that it can be played one player or maybe just two player as well yeah. uh, means that it could be a really good fit for, for my group as well, I think, which would be really cool. Um, so, yeah. There's her name that I probably said wrong. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Megalia is what I'm going to say Megalia. is her first name. But there you go. She's an amazing Megalia. artist. Megalia. Yeah. If, if you haven't checked her out before, I would definitely recommend it. In fact, sod it. I'm going to put a bloody link to the, uh, the gallery down below because her stuff is phenomenal. Yeah. Uh, Certainly a way to do it. I like yeah. the fact that there's plenty of uh, Let's Plays and introductions in a yes. variety of languages yeah. there. So mm-hmm. depending on what... Yeah. I would. Uh, as your native would, language, you'll find one in yeah. there. I think that will help you. If you are a English speaker, I would recommend the John Gets Games videos. Um, he does a really good job on uh, sort of gameplay for these. So make mm-hmm. sure you go and check that out and stuff as well. But yeah, really good stuff. Looking forward to giving it a go myself, possibly in the future when I pledge for it. Uh, but uh, yeah, nice one there for one for all games. 
go and check out Soul Raiders. Got 28 days left at the time you see yeah. this. So. Four weeks and already close to double funded. So that's always exactly. good. Yeah. It can <laughs> only get it can only get better, they tell me. Sure. Only get better me. Mm. So where next then? We are heading up the yellow blip. Blick, we're heading up the yellow brick road today. We are heading up the yellow brick road and we are joining the little small green dudes in the lollipop guild. We are reaching the amazing flying monkeys and we are heading out into the depths on the wonderful land of Oz. So L Frank Farms Oz setting has made it onto the pages of an RPG and it's up on Kickstarter and he's smashing through stretch goals like you wouldn't believe. So mm. when I checked this even last week, there was so many stretch goals to go through. There's one left now. So you get <laughs> to see Oz in its extremity, like it hasn't been, and based off the novel. So you get to carve out your own adventure in completely full of story and opportunity going through emerald city and designed for the 5e edition so it's brand new content new characters new classes everything for you to tap into that belongs within the world of oz and it looks incredible so the new campaign setting comes with loads of content brand new playable classes variants including like magical tinkerers swindlers and the opportunity to become next wicked witch so mm. it depends wherever you would like to go but it comes in tow with loads of new spells items adventure settings for you to go into the land of Oz. so that is what a happy flying monkey there. he's pretty jolly isn't he he does. He looks quite good. But as well as the new monsters, I will put this giant squirrels, Jerry. Did you know that giant <laughs> squirrels resided in the land of Oz? I was unaware of this, but then there's there's like 2,300 books in Oz and nobody <laughs> nobody has read them all. No um, one knows. <laughs> so nobody knows what's in there, but you can always, you can always uh, no. trust in a giant squirrel. Absolutely. But there's there is there's the the Beast and Bean source books, including the Kickstarter as well, so just the campaign, and you'll get the opportunity to meet loads of characters that you already know. So if you've just seen the film as well, you get to meet the Tin Man, Oz and Scarecrow, um, bits like that from the novel as well, and straight to the pages of the Sweet. RPG. So the artwork is gorgeous in this as well. Artwork is beautiful. It's very whimsical. And as I said, when I checked this last week, when we we're going through stretch goals, there was like the potential to unlock an underwater city equivalent. And that's already gone. It's already unlocked. And we've still got, I think, about six days left on this campaign. And uh, there's still one more stretch goal left. So it does. But there is a play nice. test as well. So if you are interested to see how it does play and bits mm. like that, there is a play test available on the Kickstarter page if you did want to take a look um, at it. Always uh, nice to see something like that. Yeah. Mm. yeah. yeah. It could be a tiny little one to three level module. <laughs> the Cider I, Horse Rules, yeah. not Cider House. Cider Horse. <laughs> P- puns. Everybody's Hunter getting in Dave. on the buns. Yeah. I, Dave. Did I see that there are actually winged monkeys as a playable class? Yes, you can. You can play as a winged monkey as a That sounds character. amazing. Yeah. I want what to just be to? a chaos. I want to be a force for chaos. <laughs> like in the middle of combat, just flying over, picking the fighter's helmet off and flying off into the distance yeah. and throwing it at a, I don't know, a munchkin. Or something. This, uh, anyway. <laughs> Oz is such a huge world, as Jerry said. There's just mm. so much content in Oz, and the fact that it's been adapted to an RPG, it gives people the opportunity that wouldn't necessarily read through the vast amount of content that does yeah. exist out there to kind of know what creatures, to learn more about the world. Uh, it's it's a it's a vast vast world, and I'm so glad it's being tapped into. It's such an incredible mm. fictional world that I don't necessarily see too mm. much on. So no wonder it is smashing on Kickstarter. Seems like a seems like a good fit for D and D fifth as well. Yeah, because it's, it's obviously it's got that high fantasy element to it. Yes, and I think it bodes well that they can basically be like, oh, there's all these really weird and wacky creatures. We'll just use nice, safe, friendly five E monster templates to make these and, and put them into the game, which is oh, really no. cool. Yeah. Yeah, poppy fields. Poppy, poppy fields. Mm. Stay away from them. No, mm. got to. But no, what a what a cool idea. It what is cool. very cool, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. So as I said, that is going to be up until the fifteenth of July. So mm. if you are looking uh, to head into the world of Oz and join the Lollipop Guild and sing that, I've been singing that all week since I first <laughs> discovered this. I do represent the Lollipop Guild. If you do want to represent the Lollipop Guild. Do check out the Kickstarter and have a look before it is yeah. over. I think it's definitely worth diving in there and grabbing that playtest PDF to give it a go. Yeah. I mean, that's that's forty four pages of, of 
loveliness um mm, if you are of that ilk and it's interesting because it, it is a big world there's a lot going on Thank it's you. had multiple films about it it's ripe for adventuring um in a similar way to narnia i suppose yes. and, yeah, and you know, there yeah. are two two big oh. ips that we've never really explored in mm, rpgs and tabletop so mm. shocked it's taken this long for it to happen but you can return to the land of Oz. I was looking to see if I could spot the wheelies from Return to Oz, but I couldn't see them. The terrifying things that they were. <laughs> you know, somebody was saying, "How how is that the most frightening thing you remember from that film?" When there was a, a woman who took her head off, I was like, well, you know, because Wurzel Gummidge took his head off all the time. I'd been desensitized by that. But those those creepy wheelie things were just oh they were horrendous <laughs> dreams, yep. yeah oh god yeah you always <laughs> always need to make sure you know where a staircase is when they're coming for you and uh, even strange. then it doesn't slow them down you'd be mounting a giant squirrel if you were there anyway so you'd be i fine. would you're right <laughs> there giant squirrel mounted Stay on away. bigger giant squirrels <laughs> but yeah hundred and three thousand so far of their 30 grand gold so <laughs> smash that one into we, uh yeah into the back of vaws i suppose yeah. Definitely yeah. worth grabbing if people are interested in that. Two stunning looking Kickstarters there, folks. I love it. We are going to move on now and enjoy the rest of our evening. Uh, if you are interested in seeing more of our nonsense, then you can join us <laughs> on Sunday morning uh, for the XLBS, which is our Cult of Games exclusive show. <laughs> if you're not a member of the Cult of Games, you can come over to on tabletop.com and sign up for a 30-day trial. And don't forget, if you want a chance to win the big box of adventure, <laughs> then comment below. But until Sunday, bye-bye. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.